What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to talk about some potential trade targets. We're heading into week five and if you're lucky and you're three and one, four and zero, oh, even two and two, good for you. You know, you're looking pretty good. Your team must be strong. You probably avoided the injury bug. You hopefully listened to my, uh, <laughs> my advice throughout the season and off season. Uh, but if you're not so fortunate and you might've had Jonathan Taylor, not playing, you lost Saquon Barkley, you know, you ran into some injuries. I know my, my guy, Mike Williams was out for the year, which is sad. Um, you know, but if you're like one in three or oh, and four, you're running out of time. Right, You don't have a ton of time to save your season, and the pressure's on for sure. So today, let's talk about five players that I'd like to target that I think can help you very shortly, like right in the short term, can definitely help your team out in the upcoming weeks. Um, and I didn't want to target, you know, of course, the obvious guys like Justin Jefferson, duh. Like, of course, I'd want him in a trade. You're not going to get him, but I would like it. So these are some guys that I think are pretty attainable for a decent price that I think anybody would be willing to give up. So let's talk about, I have a duo here of Brian Robinson and Terry McLaurin. Now, it's hard going both commanders because Sam Howell's a little suspect, right? He's definitely not anything proven whatsoever, but but he had a really great last week against the Philadelphia Eagles. And both these guys, I just think, are pretty talented. Brian Robinson is currently the RB7 but I don't think people really value him that way. He had one big blow up week that I think would skew the numbers. You know, if he had more of his median where it's like a 12 pointer instead of, I think he scored 24 points in one week in a PPR league, you know, it's different, but he has that ability. He's the goal line player or goal line running back in Washington. To me, Antonio Gibson is just a non factor. I think the guy's talented, but he keeps fumbling. He's just, they don't, they, he's gone. Gibson played about 30% of the snaps last week. I think he had six carries, and it's just Robinson's job. Robinson gets all the goal line. And even last week, he could have had a really big week. He fumbled on the one yard line after just running a dude over, which, you know, hey, he fumbled, so not great. But he was literally inches from getting a second touchdown of the week, already scored once, had a potential third touchdown where he fell at the one yard line, and I think they uh, ran it in. I think maybe Sam Howe ran it in. So he could have had three touchdowns on Sunday, like legitimately. So I think he is a pretty good running back who just has all the opportunity that isn't really getting valued as the RB7 right now. And he has a really great schedule coming up. Chicago, Atlanta, the New York Giants. Those teams suck. So... I would try to make this trade as soon as possible for Brian Robinson. That way you don't miss, you know, the chance when he ends up going off against Chicago and blowing up. We just saw the Broncos have pretty good success on the ground where, you know, literally Jaleel McLaughlin, who's from my alma mater, Youngstown State University, I think he had seven carries for 78 yards and a touchdown. Like, you know, they're not great on defense. And then same thing for Terry McLaurin. Right now he's the wide receiver 28. And he's just not getting valued as anything really relevant. He's good every year. He's going to finish with 1,100 receiving yards and five, six touchdowns. I could pretty much lock it in, guarantee it. He's definitely on pace for it right now. Um, it's The thing is, he's just so talented where I think he's just going to give you really big weeks, week in and week out. Nobody likes him. I tried trading him and Miles Sanders in my league like the last week. Everybody, everybody, no one wanted him. No one wanted a piece of any of that. So I like Terry McLaurin. I think he's super talented. And I think you just saw it. He had an eight for 86 this past game. He did score a touchdown that was kind of fluky where he got one of Brian Robinson's fumble recoveries. That's fluky. But these two guys, I think, are just talented and they're in pretty good situations to get a most of the attempts and targets. So if you need someone who could play right away and is a touchdown threat every week, I think you got your two guys. Next up for me is going to be Jamar Chase, wide receiver 28 in PPR leagues. Terry McLaurin is actually wide receiver 27. Jamar Chase is 28, which is shocking. You know, in his four appearances this year, Chase has finished with six, five, 20, and 10 fantasy points in PPR leagues. So he's been very disappointing as your potential number two overall pick. Trade for him. You know, there's a chance that that team right now that has Jamar Chase is one and three, oh, and four. You know, their first round pick is a complete dud. Go after Jamar Chase. I have no doubts that Joe Burrow will become, you know, come back healthy or get healthier over the season and just get back to what him and Chase were doing last year. Chase is too talented 
not to have big games. And I think you're going to have to give up a decent price for for Chase because of name recognition. But I don't see why he's not attainable. If you're 0-4 or 1-3, you can't wait around for Jamar Chase forever. You can't do it. You can't. If you started off your draft with Chase and Ramadre Stevenson as your 1-2, and two, you're struggling right now. You might not have won a game. You're in a tough spot. So I think that team, that owner, is definitely willing to give up to March Chase. If the team is, you know, maybe three and one, you know, four and oh, they're probably not looking to give up Chase because they say, oh, I'm good. I can wait and hope that Chase gets back. But if the owner in your league is struggling right now and really needs some pieces, I think you could definitely, you know, Do ponies for a horse. You could do two little pieces for one big Jamar Chase asset. You know, it's hard to say what exactly because it just depends on your, you know, on your league, of course, and who you have, who you don't have. But I don't think getting Jamar Chase would be as hard as you think it would be, especially, like I said, if the owner is struggling right now, he's looking for something to boost his team and he can't wait around for Chase forever. So go after that owner. The next guy I want to talk about is the last receiver I will have on this list, and it's C.D. Lamb, who's the wide receiver 16 right now in PPR leagues. Better days are coming for Lamb, and it has nothing to do with his talent at all. It's purely the situations the Cowboys have found themselves in. There's been two games, and you can almost consider it three games, to where they've been complete blowouts. Opening weekend against the Giants on, I think it was Sunday or Monday Night Football, the Cowboys beat them 40 to nothing, had two defensive touchdowns and three rushing touchdowns. Then they played the Jets, and CeeDee Lamb had a really great game, but they beat the Jets 30 to 10. And then they beat New England last week 38 to 3 with two defensive touchdowns and a lot of field goals. You know, Lamb scored in that game. Lamb's been decent all year, but he hasn't returned value on that end of the first round, early second round, you know, draft capital that you spent to get him or uh, yeah, I guess the other owner spent to get him on his team. So now you look at CD Lamb, and I think you could try to make a case to go, oh my God, man, Jalen Tolbert so involved, and Michael Gallup, and they run the ball so much, and look at Jake Ferguson, and even Brandon Cook. Like, all these people are getting involved if you look at the box score from last game. I mean, how many players had three or four catches? Like It was a lot of players. So I think that you can definitely package something together to get CD Lamb once again. If you see that owner that, you know, started off their draft with C.D. Lamb and ah, some not so good running back, maybe they did go with a Cooper Cup, maybe they went with Jonathan Taylor and they just been struggling. I think they're willing to maybe part ways with Lamb if you're willing to give them two probably good pieces or a straight up maybe a running back swap. You know, I I think those are really valuable pieces, especially because RBs are so hard to come by. If you're willing to give up, you know, someone in that range, you know, maybe even a James Conner at this point who's been pretty solid or a maybe a James Conner plus a Tank Dell type piece that might be able to get it done for CD Lamb. Of course, that's kind of low on the spectrum of the CD Lamb you know, I guess value because Lamb is such a household name, but start there. Don't start at the top, start there and see what the owner likes. You know, you could have a dumb owner, you could have a smart owner, you know, it just depends on your league. So if you're in a really competitive league, the CD Lamb owner might not be willing to bite. But if you're in a not so competitive league, maybe he'll go, ah, CD Lamb sucks. I hate Dak Prescott. Let me move on. And the last player that I want to talk about is a running back and it's Travis Etienne as the RB18. He, right now, Travis Etienne is a little bit underperforming. He's gotten a lot of attempts as he's fourth in the NFL in rushing attempts. He's top 10 in the NFL in targets. It's just he's not scoring touchdowns. He has one rushing touchdown, and he's been a little ineffective when it comes to you know, yards per carry. I believe he's averaging 3.8. So not a great start for Etienne, but I think that that team is try- uh, still trying to figure it out. They haven't been that smooth on offense like they were last year. It seems like getting Calvin Ridley is, I don't know. They don't, they haven't meshed well. It seems like they want to take deep shots, but then they check it down and there's no middle. And while I think ETN is a really solid player, you know, the upside is huge. We saw what he just did last year as not a rookie, but a sophomore who didn't play in his rookie season. And he was a top 12 RB, basically. So I have no doubt that Etienne can just rattle off some touchdowns 
and have some big plays and really bounce back to what he you know is for fantasy football and the NFL, which is he's a big play threat, man. You get him on the outside and he can make plays. We haven't seen too much of it this year where I believe his longest gain was only 28 yards. I expect that to change. You know, Etienne is too explosive of a player not to break off some big runs. And I would like to do this before he plays some decent or not so decent teams. I mean, Buffalo, who's really good, of course. But I think Etienne can feast in that game. We just saw Miami have Raheem Mostert and uh, Devon uh, A-Chain go off. That and then uh, Jacksonville plays Indianapolis. And not to mention, too. Jacksonville plays in probably the worst division. I know they're still two and two. Everybody is, but I don't think the Texans defense is really all that scary. Indy's defense isn't that scary to me. I just, I'm, I'm cool with that division. So I think better days are ahead for Travis Etienne, who's the RB 18 right now. I think that can go way up and I would try to get him ASAP before he has some juicy matchups coming up in the next few weeks. All right. And those were my five trade targets for week five. If you like the video, leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel for more content. I'm hoping to have more film studies coming out. I just want to like find a player that I really want to talk about and evaluate their film over the first you know couple games of the season. So stick around, stay tuned for that. And next week I'll be coming back with a waiver wire video and maybe even another trade target video, just depending. Alrighty, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.